I've been doing a lot of reading lately, obviously because of the current circumstances, but also because in about a month and a half I'm going to be moving. I figured before getting rid of most of my book collection, I should try actually uh, reading through most of it. I've been making a pretty sizable dent in it, and I figured that I might as well document um, the ones that I've read. I like keeping books that I've read and enjoyed, um, but I almost never go back and reread things after I've read them once. Uh, I just like keeping them just to have like a physical record of stuff I like, which does make moving extremely difficult. So I thought that if I uh, documented some of the books that I've read um, on video, then I would have an easier time letting go of them. In that sense, these videos are going to be more like book diaries rather than like book reviews. Very not structured. So, Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. To start off bluntly, I did like this book. I can't really talk about this without discussing also my relationship with the show, which is that um, it's taken up an enormous portion of my soul since I first saw it on the fateful day in seventh grade. I was obsessed with it until my friends had to tell me to shut up about it. The same friends who actually took me to see the show, um, which is pretty funny. So I loved the show. Coming off of that, I did really enjoy this book, uh, but tonally the two are so different from each other. In this book, Leroux takes up the voice of a reporter, uh, gradually revealing the truths of what happened in this Paris opera house some 30 years earlier. The driving force of this is still the clashing of the romances between Christine and Raoul and Christine and the Phantom. However, unlike the show, um, it doesn't treat it from a very romantic angle. This book is more, it reads more like, um, like a mystery. Comparing the two in this way is actually really interesting because plot-wise they are like so similar. Um, you can definitely tell like each aspect of the show that um, Andrew Lloyd Webber pulled from the book. But uh, where the um, biggest differences really are is in the characters and the characterization. Eric, the Phantom, uh, is in this book pretty straight up irredeemable. In the show he is significantly more romanticized. I think the main demographic uh, of fans for this show would kind of defend him at all costs from that angle and I think that because I was one of those people, sorry about it. In the book, his past is like unveiled. We see more of him outside of like um, the perspective of Christine. There are a few scenes where he's just like with the Persian, who's a character that's been unfortunately cut out of a lot of adaptations of this book, if not basically all of them. But so I guess what I mean is in the book, he comes across as like way more in silly. Whereas in the show, he just comes across as sort of like a sad boy, you know. There's actually a scene where uh, it's when Christine is trapped in his, you know, underground house for the first time. And he actually puts on a prosthetic nose to go out shopping for clothes for her and just comes back like carrying like these boxes of clothes. And I just think that's so funny. He just, in the show, he just, even after, like, it's very clear, like, oh, he's just, like, this tortured, like, genius, um, and he's so sad, but he's not, like, you know, mystical in any way. He still, you know, maintains that essence, um, and there are things that go, like, unexplained with what he can do. So just imagining him needing to, like, go out and, like, get groceries is just so funny. Um, Christine, meanwhile, in this book, never really feels, like, sympathetic towards Eric. I mean, I don't want to undersell her. There are scenes where she does like shed tears for him and she's like, oh, he leads such a bad life. Um, but she never really uh, gets past the point of being absolutely repulsed by his face. It just feels a little rude, really. I never really got a clear read on her intentions, aside from the fact that like, 
like she's in love with Raul after uh, seeing him uh, on a lot of nights uh, watching her show um, and remembering like him from her childhood. Uh, it's really something with like these old books where like it was the same in Les Mis. I guess at least Christine and Raul did know each other as children, but um, you know, then they separated and now they're back and then it's kind of immediately like, oh, like we love each other and that's how it is. As opposed to like, oh man, it's been years and probably an entire like puberty since we've seen each other. So like, what are your like interests? nowadays. Singing, I guess. I do actually love Christine in the show, um, even though you could argue that she doesn't have very much character there either, um, but I have such a soft spot for like, you know, the pretty like girl ingenue, like dewy-eyed and kind-hearted and I'm gay. I'm just, I'm very interested in like the trope of like what the perfect like you know, feminine, like, gentle girl is, is that problematic? I don't know. I mean, I didn't really get the same vibe from the book, and I don't know why. Like, I don't think that's very fair, because I don't know what the difference is between how she was in the, in the show and how she is in the book. I guess maybe because we could actually hear her, like, you know, sing in the show. Maybe that's the difference. I do want to say, I loved Raul in this. In every single scene he was in, he was just bawling his eyes out. Like, my guy is so sad. And I'm not, like, I didn't really, I don't have a problem with how he is in the show. I think that if you read into him, he can be, you know, um, like, depending on how he's portrayed, like, a little boring or, like, pretty gaslighty with the stuff that he does with Christine, um, which, you know, I guess isn't great, but, um, I'm kind of okay with him just being, like, a representation of, like, um, this is, like, who Christine loves, and, like, that's where this conflict is coming in, you know? Like, the show's not about him. The, in this book, he, he is, um, he is, like, way more of, like, a, a prominent character. Um, and what's nice is that he actually, you know, believes Christine. Uh, like, almost immediately, um, he's just like, I need to kill this Eric dude. Like, who the hell? The best part of this book for me was the ending. Uh, and I'm not even talking about all of the stuff leading up to it. Like, all the stuff with, like, you know, the traps that, like, Eric set. Um, and like his torture chamber, like I got kind of lost in the sauce there. But uh, I'm talking about like, you know, um, the very end of it. This is when Christine has to make the decision between marrying Eric or blowing up the entire opera house. He has her turn either a little bronze uh, grasshopper um, or a bronze scorpion. And the scorpion would mean that she gets to stay. And this is all without revealing the barrels of gunpowder beneath their feet, uh, which is very theatrical, Eric. I love that. And she surprises everyone. Um, Raul and the Persian are down there as well. She surprises everyone by turning the scorpion. Eric then releases the Persian and Raul while Christine stays with him. Um, but then uh, later, Eric actually shows up at the Persian's house and he reveals that he let her return to Raoul after she showed him on her own accord the kindness that no one else would. They smooched and he then asks the Persian to announce his death in the paper when he passes. And that's how the book ends uh, with the line, Eric is dead, which I thought was great because I felt like he was someone who was very at risk to running away to Coney Island and opening up a freak show. I just really love these stories where like um, an evil person like super hardened at heart changes because someone showed the purest kind of like kindness towards them like no strings attached. Just something about that feels very like idealistic to me in a way that like you know I wish like like, I wish that that was, like, a thing that happened, you know? 
There is also an epilogue where the narrative returns to present day, where Leroux goes into like the research he's done on who Eric was in the past. Um, I had a lot of fun reading this part too, even if it felt kind of supplemental. Like, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that like all that was at the end because it didn't have to do with the narrative. And this is another uh, in a series of books that I decided to read because of their Broadway counterparts. Um, I actually have those other videos on my channel as well. I did reviews of those books. Uh, but while like Wicked is a book worth reading because it's so different from the show, uh, Les Mis is definitely worth reading if you love long books or you love French history. Um, this one was kind of like, um, it was only all right. I really cannot, like, just because of how, like, strongly I love this show, I cannot imagine how I would feel had I read this um, without a prior relationship um, to the source material. But my best guess is I would have found it, like, a little boring. Like, I don't think I would have got it. Um, and that's kind of wild to say, right? Because it's, like, the original. Obviously, any of, like, the other adaptations would not exist without it. Um, and the original should be the best, you know, but like, it takes place in an opera house, you know, and it's about like this deformed man who has um, just the most like angelic singing voice. Being able to hear the music makes such a difference in like the level of connection that um, at least I had with what was happening. I don't want to at all come across like this is like a bad book. Um, at times um, it can actually be like pretty humorous um, and if you let yourself kind of like get into the swing of it there are points where it does get like pretty wild with what's happening. I will say also that this is a pretty nice size for like a casual read. I also just really like this edition of it. Um, like the I'm very into like the art on the book cover. Um, and like this feels like you know the proper size for a book. I don't love that it says Barnes and Noble um, on the spine of the actual book um, but like I really love like this kind of binding um, and like the gold over here. Um, so I'll be sad to get rid of this book like for those reasons but um, put it this way, like, I wouldn't be keeping it necessarily with the intention of ever rereading it. So yeah, that's, um, another book review. That's wild. I've been, I started doing book reviews three or four years ago on this channel, um, which is crazy. It would have been crazier if I did them consistently, but, um, I guess in a way it's kind of wild just, you know, I take so many just like year-long like gaps between making videos, um, but in my head I'm still always like that's something that I could do and then um, actually like picking up and doing it again. It feels nice, I guess. So if you watched until now I hope that you enjoyed that in some sense. I don't know how great this serves um, as a review, obviously. Like there's a spoiler, giant spoiler at the end because that's like the only scene I talk about, but um, I don't think Phantom of the Opera is a show you watch or a book you read in order to like be surprised necessarily. But yeah, um, so those are my thoughts. I mean I would love to hear like anything anyone else has to say about it. Um, if you want to like comment below with your thoughts. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.